your expectations really can only be as as high as your awareness is. And I think that's an important thing to talk about too. Your awareness is going to control a lot of your expectations and your approach. And if your awareness isn't there, your self-esteem is going to take a hit when it might not have to. Just check in with this, because you might be taking self-esteem hits regularly when it's just quite frankly not fair to you because you're comparing to social media and even that is just not real. You know, it's, it's not. It's not real. You got to be real careful of that. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was last week's live Q&A, How Can I Be More Confident in the Rooms Where I Don't Feel Good Enough Today? For episode number 977, Are Your Expectations Hurting Your Self-Esteem? Happy Friday. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful week if you are listening to this in real time. So I was on a coaching call the other day with a client and this client is a very deep thinker, very hyper-conscious. And one of my favorite parts about having our coaching calls is we usually dig deep into a lot of things besides podcasting. So we talk about podcasting, but we also talk about limiting beliefs and we talk about uh, just the human experience. And it's just, it's fun. It's a fun, fun conversation to have. But somehow we ended up getting on the the path of talking about self-esteem. And I said, you know, what happens oftentimes from what I've seen is podcasters in your position, they set these unrealistically high goals or they have these unrealistically high standards for themselves. And when they don't meet them, it hurts their self-esteem. And I think that's one of the reasons podcasters don't last that long because you're always thinking, well, I should do better than I'm doing this should be happening, this should be happening, this should be happening, but I don't get any of those results. And I said to this person, I said, you have to understand that your your competency is very, very high, but just make sure that your self-esteem, your competency, your self-worth, your belief, like all those things are understood because that's gonna determine the results that you're getting in your life. And I really want you to think about this. If you, what's a good analogy? Okay, Taryn and I went to a fair, I don't know, five months ago, six months ago, I don't remember when it was, but at this fair, it's called the Tops Field Fair, it's a big one in Massachusetts, they had that game, Alan, where you throw a baseball at milk jugs and you try to break the milk jugs, Yeah. and I was like, I played baseball for however many years, this is going to be easy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to hammer this, nope, no problem, and I get up there and I'm whipping them, and I think it's like five bucks for three balls, and I gave him a, I think I gave him a 10 spot and said... Let's get this thing popping. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win Taryn a, a nice surprise. It's not going to be a surprise. I'll win her a big stuffed animal. We'll take it home. I'm going to be the talk of the fair. And I missed with every single throw. It wasn't even close. I bounced a couple. It was bad. But wow. if I went in there, and I mean, it's not a great thing. It's not a great analogy or a great story for this because it really didn't hurt me. But imagine if I was like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be easy. I am going to crush this. Imagine if it was a first date. Think of it that way. If it was a first date with Tara and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to blow her mind. I'm going to get six teddy bears right now. This is going to be easy. And I didn't. And that expectation hurt my self-esteem for the rest of the night. I think a lot of us are living our lives based in that mindset. And, And this is the other thing too. You can only take other people's advice with a grain of salt because their advice is based on their self-esteem and their self-belief and their self-worth, not yours. So I can come in and say, hey, you can do, you should be doing X, 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 X. If I don't know what you feel behind the scenes, that might actually be setting you up for something that's going to be painful. So my goal in this episode is for you to figure out, okay, are my expectations, are my standards actually realistic for my level of self-esteem? And if I overshoot my expectations and don't meet them, am I hurting myself? If I undershoot, am I hurting myself? We realize that if you're a dream chaser, you're doing things oftentimes that you've never done before. And many of us have lower expectations and say, oh, this is going to go horribly wrong. And then we reinstill belief in ourselves when it goes right but it goes on the opposite end too. So that is our goal to raise your awareness to that today. So the the through line of this podcast, as you know, I've said it many times, heart-driven but no BS, holistic self-improvement for dream chasers. Like Kevin mentioned, if you're a dream chaser, that means that you have at least some level of self-belief, enough to at least want a different life than most people live. 
And if that's the case, you're going to have to have different standards for yourself than most people do. And that can be really challenging when it comes to self-esteem. I think that self-esteem is built through slowly and incrementally making and keeping promises that you make to yourself. I've said it many, many times. I will say it many, many more times. If you had a friend who broke as many promises to you as you have broken to yourself, how much would you value that friendship? Not very much. They say they're going to call. They don't call. They say they're going to text you back. They don't text you back. They say they're going to do this thing and babysit for you or dog sit for you and they never show up. They never do it. Of course, you're not going to trust them. Self-esteem is built through self-trust and self-trust is keeping the promises you make to yourself. But if you make these outrageous promises that are so far beyond your capabilities, you're in trouble. So in Kevin's analogy, I actually do think that was a really good analogy. So Kevin was basing a current result based on a past experience. He played baseball. He was an all-star baseball player. And you haven't played baseball in how long? How many years has it been since you played baseball? 17 years old. So 15 years. Okay. So 15 years have passed since Kevin has been an awesome, uh, awesome at throwing a baseball. And he comes in hot and he's like, I'm going to crush this. I'm an all-star baseball player. That's called an identity. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's subconscious. He's not consciously like, I'm an awesome baseball player. And no, it's his identity. And so what happens is he, he expects himself, aka his standards for how he throws a baseball are very, very high. But the reality is he hasn't played in 15 years. So he was looking at the wrong data. The data he was looking at was I was an all-star baseball player. I was awesome back then at throwing. I used to be able to throw people out all the time. I was a shortstop. Great. And the data he should have been looking at is honestly, I haven't thrown a baseball in like 15 years. I probably am going to suck, but let's see. Let's give it a try anyway. So I wrote this graph out and it's very, very simple. It looks like an upside down horseshoe. And you've heard us talk on this podcast a lot about what's referred to as an optimal stopping problem. The reason our app is called Optimal is because it's sort of like Goldilocks. There's there's some soup porridge that's too big and some that's too little. There's some that's too hot and there's some that's too cold. Everything in life is like that. Some people work too much. Some people work too little. Some people, you know, talk too much and listen too little. Some people listen too much and talk too little. It's always an optimal stopping problem based on the goal, based on the individual, based on the context of the circumstance. So I have this written out. I was doing this earlier and it's an upside down horseshoe and self-esteem. What you're looking for is the maximum amount of self-esteem. And I call this the self-esteem sweet spot. The self-esteem sweet spot represents the, the right amount of standards based on your actual accurate capabilities. So on the far right, you have too high, where the self-esteem goes way, 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 way down. Again, upside down horseshoe in this graph. So if you have too high of standards for yourself, your self-esteem is going to plummet. If you have too low of standards for yourself and you're constantly living way below your standards and you know you're capable of more, your self-esteem is going to plummet. This is why so many of us have trouble with self-esteem and self-worth because we were never really taught how to build it. I'll give you an example of each extreme. I'll give you an example of all three. And I'll use what Kevin um, said in terms of this baseball analogy. If Kevin had gone in and asked them, hey, this is a hard one. Can you please like bring these uh, milk cartons closer and can you give me, you know, this this smaller ball that's easier to throw? See, that's not going to build self-esteem because Kevin was a baseball player and Kevin knows he's better than that, okay? But those things are set up, by the way, at those okay. carnivals. Those are set ups. I, 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 did them, uh, I do basketball ones. I swear to God, those rims are pinched, man. They're, they're pinched so that you can't get the ball in unless it's absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. And so a too high of expectations is what he did. He came in hot. He's like, I'm going to crush this. This is going to be no problem instead of realizing he hasn't thrown a baseball in 15 years. So that's too high and too low. Both are self-esteem hits. Okay, if I go to my first Brendan Burchard event and I assume I'm going to be as strong of a speaker as he is and I speak on stage next to Brendan Burchard who has two decades on me, I'm going to take a big self-esteem hit. If I go in... And I speak next to Kevin, who we've been speaking about the same amount of time, me, if anything, a little bit more, I'm not going to take a self-esteem hit. But if I never step on stage, I never take the courageous action, I never even say I'm going to be a speaker, that's going to be a self-esteem hit over time as well. So that's my through line for this episode, which is, are your standards too high and unrealistic? 
or are they too low and uninspiring? Are your standards too high and unrealistic, or are they too low and uninspiring? So that's only true, only you know for you, whether or not you're living below your standards or above your standards. But then there's the the other question of, are your standards actually in the self-esteem sweet spot? Self-esteem is necessary for you to achieve your dreams. No one's ever achieved their dreams if they always felt like crap about themselves. And so you got to find that sweet spot for yourself and no one can do that for you. And, and it's really important that you take control of that process. And Alan, I had a breakthrough when you were talking. I think this is one of the reasons that you and I are so passionate about giving as accurate advice as we can based on our experience. Because imagine if I told you, yeah, being a millionaire is super easy. Like it's super easy. It's not challenging at all. All you really have to do is come up with a product and then just start talking about it on social media and you'll be a millionaire probably by this time next year. And that becomes your expectation. And when you don't do it, you say, oh, I'm broken. I'm not meant to do this. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. That hurts your self-esteem. And then every expectation you set after that is lower because your self-esteem is lower. That's one of the reasons Alan and I are trying always to say, Again, heart-driven, but no BS. Heart-driven, we love you all so very much. No BS, we want to tell you what it's actually taken and what it'll most likely take for you. And I just think that there's so many areas to, to get misguided and we won't go too deep into it. But understand that if you do not get the result that you are looking for, check in with your self-esteem. And I think one of the natural reactions for people is like, I'm not good enough, I'm not enough, I'm not blank, I'm not this, when maybe your approach wasn't correct. Maybe you, your awareness wasn't high enough, right? I mean, your expectations really can only be as, as high as your awareness is. And I think that's an important thing to talk about too. Your awareness is going to control a lot of your expectations and your approach. And if your awareness isn't there, your self-esteem is going to take a hit when it might not have to. So that is our our goal here it's interesting because we've said this in the past, Alan, when you're feeling really, really, really good, that's when you stretch and you try to do more and you take risks. When you're really, really struggling and in the moment you have low self-esteem, low belief, you feel bad about yourself, you're insecure, that's when you just got to line up W's. You don't focus on having this giant fear-chasing marathon where you're doing things that are way outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes you got to stay within your comfort zone to rebuild yourself, especially if your self-esteem is is low. So oftentimes you have to figure out, okay, where am I right now? How do I base or set an expectation off of that and then kind of roll with it? But it's interesting, Alan. This is a this is an interesting one because I think there's just so many layers to this topic. Hey, I wanted to give my experience working with Kevin and the rest of the Next Level University team. It has been such a seamless relationship. He is so easy to work with, Kevin, and he gives you all the information you need, but doesn't overwhelm you. He's also um, meets you where you're at. So whatever you want to do, he'll make it work. And it's just, there's no stress, there's no drama. And everybody else that I've worked with has been patient with me because I am not technologically savvy. So they've been helpful and patient and just encouraging. And it's just been a fantastic experience. I highly, highly recommend working with them. Kev, before we go here, yeah, man. just want to give one more example of each of these three. So if I were to go play tennis against Serena Williams, I'm going to get smoked and think I'm a terrible pen- tennis player. But if I also play against a four-year-old who's never played tennis, I'm going to think I'm awesome. Both are not true. I'm not a terrible tennis player. I'm just a beginner. And I'm not an awesome tennis player either. I'm playing against a four-year-old. It's very important to understand that. And in social media land, it can be very dangerous to, whether it's podcasting or speaking or writing. I mean, James Clear's book on Atomic Habits is, is the standard at which I'm trying to write my book at. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a self-esteem hit. Sometimes I'm writing my book and I'm like, how the hell does he do it? It's so good. Does he have editors that I don't? Like, is he smarter than me? He's just been writing much longer, I think. And that was his main thing. And I'm sure that when it comes to podcasting, I've done a lot more podcasting than he uh, he does, so maybe that's a more accurate measurement, right? He's written, I think his blog has been going for 15 years. Like, if I had a blog that I wrote every day for 15 years, I'm sure I'd feel a little better about my writing skills. You have to understand the implications of these things, and you have to try to be accurate in your thinking about yourself. And it's really difficult to do that when you don't really know the truth about anyone else especially when some of them are pretending they're awesome when they're not, or, or they had ghostwriters when you didn't know it. You know, 
it's just a fascinating thing. And the last thing I'll say is like, yeah, this question, are your standards high and unrealistic? It is unrealistic for me to think that I can be as good of a writer as James Clear when I've never written a book before. And he's been blogging for 15 years. And that's the one book that I ended up noticing. I don't even know if he has other books. That's an unrealistic and high self-esteem hit for me. But if I compare to a four-year-old writing a book, of course I'm going to be inflated and it's going to be the small fish in the big pond or the big fish in the small pond thing. So you really do have to be very careful about this. So yeah, are your standards too high and unrealistic or too low and uninspiring? And the very, very last thing I'll say here is you have to understand the time perspective on this. If Kevin wants to do the splits in three years, that's totally doable. But if he wants to do the splits tomorrow, he's going to have very low self-esteem. And same with me. So you have to understand there's a lot of layers to this. Mm. And and maybe we'll do another episode on time perspective at some point. I know that's on our ideal list. But yeah, just, just check in with this because you might be taking self-esteem hits regularly when it's just quite frankly not fair to you because you're comparing to social media and even that is just not real. You know, it's, it's not. It's not real. You got to be real careful with that. Or you're comparing to what you think you should compare to. I think that's a whole nother conversation is there's a lot of people who think they should be really hard on themselves when they probably shouldn't. It might not be serving you at the level, you know, think about it this way. Alan and I had, we just did that episode on Wednesday about uh, the commitment devices, how to tie in accountability. I don't remember the, the name of the episode. Uh, uh, one one h- accountability ahead. trick. Yeah, one huge accountability trick. Me saying like, I am not happy with my body, I'm not in shape. Even me saying like, I'm kind of fat right now. That is my expectations of, I know where I've been. And I know how much truth to give myself when it comes to fitness because my self-esteem is very high when it comes to fitness. Too right? high, my standards, what some would argue in some ways. Yeah, right. Right. Because it, it's a little bit inflated yeah. based on, yeah. And so you're trying to live in the truth of mm-hmm. what your own capabilities are, yeah. right? Go ahead. But, I didn't but mean it, to interrupt you. No, no, you're good. You're good. But if you're somebody out there who has a very, very bad, I don't want to say bad, a possible toxic relationship with your body, you probably shouldn't beat yourself up. Because for right. you, it's like you got to give yourself self-love in order to get a different result and then build that relationship first. So really go through this thought process and say, how, okay, historically, have my expectations been beyond my current capabilities? And if so, has that hurt my self-esteem and stopped me from continuing to try? Because if so, that that is not going to work for you. That formula is not going to work over the long run, I think your challenge has to be just outside of your capabilities, not to the point where you're going to say, mm, this isn't for me, mm, this isn't for me. There's a lot of people who do that, and we don't want that to be you, because one of the the best ways to make progress is to stay in something long enough to actually make progress. And if you're just dipping your toe, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to make progress. Okay. One of the, oh my God, quick, he's one going of, off again. I know. <laughs> one of the reasons Kevin and I started doing 1% wins with the 1% improvements is because of this. Mm. We started overly focusing on only what could improve and we're not giving ourselves any W's and it hurt our self-esteem, which is not sustainable. So it, it is a, it's a harmony. You have to look at the wins as well as the losses. You have to have the, the, the self-esteem sweet spot dialed in and consistently dialed in as your capabilities improve. That's why it's so difficult because everything is a sliding scale. Any sliding. chance I get to say sliding scale, I, I know, I Kevin say, gets pumped. Any yeah. opportunity for that is a good one. I had a wonderful call the other day with somebody who has been following my journey since the hyperconscious days. She said, hey, can I run something by you? And I said, yeah, absolutely. What do you got? And she talked about how her story was something that she was very, very proud of. And she overcame an eating disorder and all these things and ended up running the Boston Marathon and became a police officer and is doing amazing things in the world. She said, do you think I could do a podcast on that? I said, absolutely. There is so much inspiration in who you are as a human being and I would love to help you. And she said, what is it all, how does it all look? And I said, well, believe it or not, we actually have a company who does that. That's our one of our businesses. And she said, oh my goodness, I, I'm so excited. And we booked another call. If you are a podcaster or you believe that you have a podcast inside of you, please reach out. Next Level Podcast Solutions would be happy to help you bring this thing to reality. Again, we do everything from just coaching 
to audio editing, video editing, we can make it so all you have to do is show up in front of the microphone and everything else gets done for you in the highest quality possible. So if you are interested, please, please, please reach out. I would love to help you and Next Level Podcast Solutions would love to help you. I've watched Kevin study the ins and outs of podcasting every day for over five years now. And uh, there's no one who I believe holistically knows more about podcasting in general. So, so Thank you, sir. at the very least, book a half hour call with Kevin, pick his brain, get the value, and he's not going to sell you anything. No, so no. Just I jump just on like the phone. chatting. I like talking about yeah. podcasting. Big fan and, of it. And it helps us too to understand your challenges and your struggles and what people think versus what's reality and all of that. So super important. Okay. The Next Level Hope Foundation, we are unbelievably grateful. We had a $500 goal. Again, helping boys without fathers on Father's Day, taking a traditionally sad day and turning it into a fun one with dodgeball and kickball and I think Gaga Ball is the name yeah, of it. Yeah, I don't... Gaga it's Ball. It's kind of like dodgeball, but different. Okay. So we have up to... So we're going to match up to $500. So the community has already donated $450. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to give a shout out to the following first names only. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Beth. And thank you, my man, D-Rock. No, it's Derek. And seriously, thank you. Every little bit has helped so much. And we are only $50 off from our goal. And Father's Day is coming up, I believe, in like 30 days or so. So we are getting t-shirts. We already have them ordered that say the future is next level. These boys are going to have an awesome day on a traditionally sad day. Thanks to all of you. So we will match up to the 500. So it's going to be a thousand this year. Over 20 boys without fathers in the greater Worcester area. Please help us inspire these boys. And hopefully we can be some strong male role models in their life like Kevin and I did not have. Uh, we're only 50 bucks off our goal. So so let's um, let's get to our goal. Next Level Nation, as Alan mentioned, I don't know if you mentioned it in this episode or Wednesday's episode, but we are doing Mindset by Carol Dweck in Book Club, and by we, I mean not me, because I do not show up to those things, but tomorrow for episode number 978, we're going to be talking about mindsets. We'll talk about fixed mindset growth and then a couple of extra add-ons that Alan came up with. As you know, we try to go as deep as we can to add as much value as possible, so tune in for episode number 978, which of these mindsets do you have? As always, we love you, appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you, and at NLU, we do not have fans, we have family, we will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.